Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Before I dive in, thank you guys so much for 1K subs. I appreciate every single one of you and I look forward to growing this community into something truly unique. Now, I don't wanna waste any time, so make sure to follow me on Twitter at BlockchainGavin. If you find any of this information helpful or valuable in any way, make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. So I've already dropped a ton of projects on my channel that are going to mint this month. There's at least 10 that haven't even minted yet, probably closer to 12. So I wanna switch it up and bring you guys something that a lot of you have been either DMing me or asking me about, and that's simply tips and tricks in the NFT space, whether you're new or whether you've been around for a minute, but maybe there's just some things that you're not sure of, you're unaware, and you want some clarity on. If you already know how to do some of this stuff, feel free to skip ahead. As always, timestamps will be provided. So the first thing I wanna talk about is minting directly from the contract. It's super easy, but it seems like a lot of people don't know how to do it, so I'm just gonna show you. For this example, we'll just use My Pet Hooligan, and essentially all you wanna do is when you're minting a new project, most times, not always, but most of them, they'll give you the contract address just in case anything happens, like the website crashes because there's too much uh, volume on the website or whatever. Maybe the website might be too slow and it might be more efficient to mint from the contract. Either way, it's just a good idea. I always have the contract open in a separate tab in case the website crashes or something happens that way I can always go right onto Etherscan and mint the contract directly. Okay, so like I said, most projects will give you the contract address, but we'll use a project that's already launched. Obviously, my pet hooligan will just open. So if you click this little button on any transaction in OpenSea, it will actually take you to the Ethereum transaction hash on etherscan.io. So all I'm gonna do is go to my pet hooligan. So normally when they give you the contract address, you would just copy the contract address and paste it into search, but we're already here. So, and I know this might seem complicated the first time around, but once you do it a few times, it's super basic, it's super easy. Once you're on the contract address in Etherscan, you just go to contract, and then you're gonna wanna make sure that this is a green dot. If it's displaying a red dot, it simply means that our wallets aren't connected. So we're gonna click connect to Web3. You're gonna click MetaMask. You're just gonna confirm the connection. As soon as you confirm the connection, you just need to click on it again click MetaMask, you'll get this little pop-up. It says this is a beta version. Etherscan doesn't claim any liability for any of this. Yes, we know it's the blockchain. Click OK, and then you will have a green dot. Once you have a green dot, that means that the wallet is connected and you are good to go. So then when you scroll down, you'll see all of these fields. The only field that you need to worry about when it comes to minting a contract is the mint field. So you just click on that, it'll open up. The mint price was 0 0.08 for each one. And if you were in the pre-sale, you were allowed to mint up to three. So Basically how it works with minting from the contract is if the mint price is 0 0.08, but you're minting three, then you need to multiply it by the amount of tokens you're minting. So in this case, it would be 0.24. So 0.24 divided by three tokens is 0 0.08. And then we would just type three tokens for the count. If we were just doing two, this number would go to 16. Uh, and if we were doing one token, then we would just put in 0 0.08. So you just want to 0 0.08. So you just want to make sure that whenever you are minting X amount of tokens, that you multiply the tokens that you're grabbing by the mint price. So just make sure you get the math on that right. That's why what I like to do beforehand, if I'm going to mint something public and it's time sensitive, and they usually give out the contract. So if I knew I was going to mint five tokens and it was 0.1 each, I would do 0.50. And I would do five tokens. And then whenever the public sale launches, then I could immediately go ahead and write the contract. I don't have to think about it in the moment and accidentally mess up the transaction. So essentially once you get the mint price right and the token quantity, so after you fill in the fields and the contract goes public, or if you're doing it on the pre-sale, you just click write. And then it would be just like a normal transaction on OpenSea or minting the actual contract. And you'll see that this has a crazy number. And that just means that these tokens have already been minted. So there's a crazy high fee, as you guys know. If it's super high, like 15, 20, 30, whatever K, it means you don't have enough Ethereum in your wallet. If it's a fee that's like this, it typically means that the token has already been minted, which in this case, we know it has because they sold out of their supply. So that's pretty much it. That's how you mint the contract. I'm obviously going to reject this, but it's super simple. You just wanna go on Etherscan, hit contract, make sure you're connected to Web3, go into mint, uh, multiply the token quantity by the mint price to get the Ethereum amount and then insert the amount of tokens you want to mint and then click right. Okay, so the next tip I want to talk to you guys about is not going into OpenSea and buying things right off the floor if a project has just come off its mint and there's already still 
a fresh amount of hype where people are buying this up like crazy. Because I've been seeing this a lot where people are talking about having failed transactions on OpenSea. And if we go into My Pet Hooligans activity, we can see that it's been about three days since these have minted, but the activity is still pretty fresh. So this is still a good example to use, but especially when the contracts go public and they first hit OpenSea, there's gonna be a ton of volume. People are gonna be FOMOing in left and right. You're gonna get multiple transactions every minute. So what you do not want to do is you do not want to be minting the absolute floor. So by that, I mean, this says point Five, four. This also says 0.54. So this is the absolute bare minimum on the floor price, right? If we go into this and we click buy now, there's a solid chance that by the time I click buy now and send the transaction through, one, two, three, four, five, six, who knows how many people may have already tried to purchase the same token. So basically what that means when you do that is you're gonna lose your gas on the transaction. Obviously you're not gonna get charged for the token because it's not gonna be in your wallet, but the likelihood of you losing out on the gas fee on that transaction is very high especially when there's a lot of hype around a project. There could be thousands, if not tens of thousands of people trying to buy the floor price at the same time. So the likelihood of your transaction going through is actually quite low. So what I would do and what I would recommend you guys do is instead of hunting the floor price, you wanna go one or two rows down to purchase the floor. That way you have a much better chance, a higher probability of your transaction going through simply because there's a much better chance that other people aren't trying to mint the exact same token at the exact same time. So basically to put it simple, you just click buy now and try not to buy the first row because there's a solid chance, especially right after mint, that a lot of other people are gonna be wanting to mint that same exact token because obviously it's going to be the cheapest one for the collection. Now, if it's a different project, for example, Doodles, this one would be different. Buying the floor price would be okay because this is a collection that's been out for a while and people aren't buying this every single minute. The last transaction was 27 minutes ago. Before that, there was three transactions that happened an hour ago. And before that, there was three transactions that happened three hours ago. So in this scenario, it's totally okay to buy the floor price because in this case, there isn't a bunch of hype and FOMO demand where people are just buying up the floor like crazy. This collection has been out for a minute, so like I said, there's gonna be a lot fewer people trying to mint the floor price. So with this, I'm totally okay with minting a floor price on a project that's already been out for a while, because like I said, there's just not that same amount of volume of people trying to mint the floor for the token. Once that Gavin just hit me up in MTG, let's see what he's gotta say. And also what you wanna keep in mind is that a lot of times you're not just gonna be going up against other humans. There's also gonna be bots programmed in this market. So I was looking through OpenSea and I noticed that this board ape sold for 0.75 Ethereum, which was about $3,000 at the time. And based off of the floor prices, this should have been listed for around 75 ETH. And it turns out that the guy did in fact accidentally list it for 0.75 Ethereum instead of 75 Ethereum. He just made a simple listing mistake, which he tried to correct immediately, but a bot had already snatched it up the second he listed it because the bot was programmed to find certain items that are way undervalued um, in certain collections and floor prices. So that is an example of the bot factor uh, in the market. So you have to be aware of that when you're, when you're going and shopping for floor prices on these newer projects that just get launched where people are FOMOing into them like crazy. Now, the third and final tip that I have for you guys is it's kind of contradictory to the other tip I just gave you, but if you have the Ethereum to play around with and you're comfortable with boosting up your GUI when it comes to pushing through faster transactions on the Ethereum blockchain, what you can do is if a project just launches and you either minted your max amount in public, you minted your max amount in presale, and you just think that the project is gonna do absolutely amazing. When I say absolutely amazing, I'm talking at least somewhere between a five to 10X off the mint. What I like to do is I like to have a separate tab open in OpenSea. And as soon as the mint goes public, I keep refreshing and I look for the first paper hands who are just looking to make a quick 2X flip. And again, I probably won't buy the first one, two or three. I'll try and get four, five or six, because again, no matter how fast you are, there's always gonna be someone faster than you that has better ping a bot or is willing to pay more in gas. So what I'll do is, again, I'll look for like maybe the second or third row. I will go into a transaction and I'll try and snipe any of those that are like easily listed at like a two, somewhere between a two to three X. If I'm super confident that the project is gonna hit a five to 10 X, then I'll go ahead and pick those up. And when I go into the Ethereum transaction, as I've already showed you guys in a previous video, I'll bump up my GUI a little bit, just so that my transaction has a super high probability 
of going through within five to 10 seconds. So let me see if I can find a project that has just minted and hit OpenSea to give you guys an example. Okay, I guess I might as well just use my pet hooligan again because I'm pretty sure sales are still going through quite fast and you can tell because the floor price is jumping all over the place. So yeah, a few seconds ago, a minute, two minutes. So this is a good one for this example. So assuming the contract just went live, I would refresh the page, I'd click buy now, which refreshes the page actually anyway. And then I'd probably go to the second or third row, click one super fast. I don't care which one it is because free reveal, you're not gonna know what the rarity tree is. For all you know, it could be a legendary or a super common. I don't really care. I would immediately click buy now and then send the transaction through and bump up the GUI. And if I can, I'd just keep doing that until I'm comfortable with the amount of tokens that I was looking to buy at a 2X on the secondary market. And it is going to happen, especially in larger collections. There's always gonna be those paper handed people who are completely happy with a ridiculous like 1.5 to 2X profit. Those are the types of listings that I go for. And I try to snipe as quickly as possible just so that I can add more tokens to my collection, being confident that we'll probably see a five to 10X pre-reveal. So again, that one is a little bit more risky. I would only do it if you have a good amount of Ethereum in your wallet and if you're comfortable with boosting up the GUI in your transaction. And it especially works great uh, when it's a low GUI day because boosting up the GUI doesn't cost all that much. And the final tip I have for you guys, this is super important. This comes to minting a public contract. So a perfect example of this is Squishy Squad because I told my Discord that I was liking how their pre-sale went. They sold out more than half their supply in pre-sale. The floor price was double the mint price and they already had over a hundred in Ethereum of volume traded. So I told my Discord that I was gonna go ahead and mint 18 to 16 of these, depending on how fast it sold out. But when it came to actually minting the contract, the gas fees were absolutely insane. No shade to Squishy Squad, but I'm pretty sure they did not optimize their contracts for gas because it was absolutely ridiculous. The cost for me to mint the eight tokens in the first transaction would have costed me 1.6K for the tokens, but 3K in gas. So these would have had to do a 3X just for me to basically break even or make even a little bit of profit. So I immediately told my Discord, I'm out, I'm passing, it's not worth it. Because A, like I said, I don't think their contracts are optimized well. And B, the mint price was only 0.08 ETH. So if you're gonna pay more in gas, per token, then you're gonna pay for the actual token itself. The math just doesn't make sense. Now, where the math does make sense is a project like this project called Shiba Social Club Official. So this is just an example. I didn't mint these, but I know their public sale was 0.27 ETH. So in this type of collection, I'd be more than happy paying four or five or $600 per token, or even maybe more because the math makes sense relative to their mint price. But for Squishy Squad, it didn't make any sense at all because the gas fee per token was more than the mint price. So for these, if you minted one at 0.27 and the floor has gone down a bit, it was a bit higher, but if you minted these at 0.27 and you had to pay like five or $600 per token and you flip these at the current floor price, you'd still come out with a thousand dollars profit minimum per token paying five or $600 in gas per token. And that's because the math adds up. Their mint price is 0.27 ETH. So if the project has a lot of hype, which this did, then it's very probable that this type of project will do a two to three X. And keep in mind when a mint is higher like 0.3 or 0.5 or 0.2, versus a mint that's 0 0.05 or 0 0.08, it's not gonna do as many Xs, but that doesn't mean you're not gonna make just as much money because if you mint 10 0.05s, but you mint 10 0.5s and they double, you're actually gonna make more on the doubles. You would actually make more money on a project that cost 0.5 that did a 2X if you minted the same amount of tokens, in this case, 10. So again, to clear it all up in case there's any confusion, minting a project public that costs a ton of gas fees makes a lot more sense, mathematically speaking, because if the mint price is higher, we're likely gonna see a two or three X on a very hyped up project, and you're easily gonna recover those gas fees back plus more in profit. But if the mint price is super low and the gas fees is super high, the math just doesn't add up and you're gonna to have to do a three or four X just to make a little bit of profit, which in my opinion, doesn't make sense. I'm just gonna pass and move on unless you happen to get into the presale. So I hope that makes sense. Basically, if you're going to mint a public sale, which I have no problem with, do it on a collection that costs more in ETH because if the hype is there and the probability is high of it doing a two or three X, you're gonna make just as much money than a, a lower mint project that does a five or 10 X. So you paying those high gas fees will end up being worth it. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you found at least one of those tips valuable or helpful in some way. And if you did, let me know in the comments down below which tip was your favorite and the most helpful. Also, I will be doing a giveaway soon. I don't know if you guys can see this. You should be able to. Soon I will be giving away 
I will be giving away one of these posters to one of my subscribers. So make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. But that's it for me. I hope you guys have an amazing weekend. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at BlockchainGavin, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.